everyone. I'm Kunal from SIBO. And so we're going to here to talk about a few things of interest today. Yeah, it's been great attending KubeCon. I think it's my, yeah, I don't know, seven to eight. So um, they do gone. That's yeah. amazing. But yeah, it's been fun. And yeah, shout out to Code Cloud. They're doing some amazing work. And yeah, it's uh, nice to meet people in person. Yeah. I don't think I've been outside this room. Because it's, the last three days. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the scale of the conference. It's like 10,000 people. And I was at the SIBO booth. So just talking to customers and business partners. And yeah, it's overwhelming, but nice. Awesome. What would you say is the best either concepts, products, talk that you've been to thus far? I didn't get a chance to attend any talks, so that's a bummer. Good thing all the ones are being recorded. I was at the Fermion booth. We are doing stuff with our deep green GPUs for the environment and things like that. The deep green GPUs, for example, it's like they take the heat generated from the servers and they use that to heat for day-to-day -day tasks like heating the swimming pool. Oh, nice. So that's like carbon negative. Very cool. One of the key highlights is meeting amazing people. Some of the visionaries, Tim was there, creator of Kubernetes. There's a creator of Docker right there. Solomon, right? Solomon is yeah. there. So humble guy, I, I spoke to him. And it's interesting to see the new startups. So I like this area I like a lot yeah. because you get to see new companies which are doing some amazing things. But yeah, overall, I think it has all been about networking and just talking to people. Yeah, you can't have everything. So I missed out on some of the nice talks. Indeed, we did as well. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of stuff about LLMs. So I'm excited to play around with that, but uh, yeah. Awesome. When we went around, we those people were talking a lot about eBPF, yeah. Backstage, yeah. Cilium, Argo, and that's not all eBPF related, but it was like really honestly, it was about some about smoothing the delivery experience, the developer experience, and then getting more observability and insight with Cilium and eBPF. What do you think about those three as the predominant ones that are dominating right of, now? A lot of companies here that are focusing on the dev parts of DevOps because the whole platform engineering thing because developers don't want to worry about the YAML, right. for example. So they just want to write code and not worry about deploying or scaling or whatever. So a lot of companies over here. And also when I go to KubeCon, like it's like 10,000 people. I don't know, I don't know the official numbers for Chicago, but I'm like, do you know about Kubernetes? And they're like, yeah. Are you using it now? Because Isn't that interesting? Yeah, because and I'm like, why? It's this complex and in terms of resources, in terms of budget and the training of the staff or whatever. A lot of managed service providers over here that are trying to simplify it for folks to move to Kubernetes and platforms as a service. And yeah, to answer your question, a lot of companies and booths I'm seeing here that are helping developers, which is nice. EBPF, yeah, we knew it was like going to be very popular. Game changing. Yeah. yeah, because that's what it has been like for the past three, four KubeCons. And now there's new versions and the documentary, which is nice. And they released a children's book. Shout out to Bill. But yeah, with the EBPF, I've also seen some booths that are using EBPF for observability. So there's ground cover. They use EBPF driven observability. But yeah, I think it's pretty cool what's <laughs> happening in the ecosystem. And uh, yeah, the ISO Will and folks have really done a very good job with the whole the community around it, VPF and Cilium. But so along those lines, because you mentioned earlier about platform engineering, right? As that main pattern that we're looking at to ease the developer friction, right? Especially when it comes to the deployments and everything. It's not really their primary concerns, right? Not exclusive, but not primary. Mm -hmm. My curiosity is, is that it seemed like the, there was infrastructure and then we ended up with virtualization. So this is like the, the VMware of 2001, 2002, right? Then come all cloud hits its maturing stride about 10 years later, 2009, 2010, 2011, all of a sudden AWS and Azure and all those. And now we've got cloud as a platform. Then Kubernetes and the containerization hits 2014, 2015, 2016. We see it hit stride. We've got this as a platform. What do you think is the next emerging platform that's going to be like the next abstraction later? Yeah. Someone said to me earlier, they thought WebAssembly was going to be it. You stole my answer. Ah, stole okay. my answer. That's, you were thinking the same thing. Yeah, WebAssembly, yeah. In the ecosystem for Bosom is not as big as cloud native right now, but looks promising. So I think because comparing to like previous years to right now, because now the CNCF is also showing initiatives. There was, I think, day or something. And then there's a WasmCon that's happening. I was at the Fermion booth. They're doing some pretty cool stuff with Wasm, with Kubernetes. They released a new project. But yeah, I think we talk about platform engineering. I, it's nothing new. People have been doing it for a while. Right. And people are like, oh, it's a new thing. Or there's a booth that says DevOps is dead. I know that's clickbait. It's fine. We get it. But the term may be coined. I don't know when it was like coined. Maybe I, I've only seen it pretty recently. But when you look at it, what it does, it's been like, this has been happening for a few years. So it's not a DevOps versus platform engineering thing. I think it's like it goes complements each other. 
But the next thing, yeah, Wasm. Looking, uh, looking forward to the Wasm landscape in a few years. Let's see how that goes. But now that folks are integrating <laughs> it with Cades, yeah, it's already a huge Cades ecosystem. Right. Like security and access and whatever. So let's see how that plays out with Wasm. But I'm very excited about the future of Wasm. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, to be respectful for your time, thank you so much for hanging out with Appreciate us. It, thank you. Yeah, it's a thank pleasure. You. We'll catch you next time. All right. All right. Oh, and by the way, if people want to stay connected with you, how do they best find you? Uh, I'm active on Twitter, YouTube, Skunal, Kushoha. And yeah, work at Tivo, but yeah, I think Twitter is the, or X. X, yes, uh, we all know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you can find me there, but yeah. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. All right.